This is the Elgato Facecam 4K. It's capable of capturing 4K Ultra HD video up to 60 frames per second, and it supports lens filters just like a mirrorless or DSLR camera system. In the box, it comes with its own USB-C cable. It's two meters or about six and a half feet long, so you'll have plenty of room to get the camera positioned wherever you want in your setup. This is the stand or monitor mount for installing it, and we're gonna take a closer look at that in just a minute. And the camera comes all wrapped up in some paper because Elgato likes to keep things fresh. It's a nice looking camera. It's got a big lens on the front, single USB-C port on the back to get set up. We have a quarter 20 thread mount on the bottom, which is awesome because it opens up a lot of different mounting options. To attach the monitor mount, you just open it up so you can reach the screw head and then tighten it down onto the camera. And it's got a little flip out handle on there so you can do this without having to get a screwdriver, which is nice because who wants to mess around with tools? The mount allows for some tilt movement. So if you've got the camera sitting high up on your monitor and it's looking down at you, it's really easy to just tilt it and get your frame set up the way you want it. And because it has that universal quarter 20 thread on the bottom, you can attach it to pretty much any accessory that works with mirrorless or DSLR cameras like tripods and magic arms and even sliders. So you can get some nice cinematic movement in your shots. The camera and monitor mount together are really lightweight, coming in around just over 160 grams. That's quite a bit heavier than something like the Obsbot Tiny 2 Lite that weighs less than 100 grams, but still it feels light as a feather compared to the nearly 340 gram Razer Keo Pro Ultra. The build quality on the Facecam 4K is kind of cheap feeling. It feels hollow and like it's just made of cheap plastics everywhere, but it's a webcam and most people are probably just gonna sit it on their monitor and never touch it again. So it might not really matter that much. It's worth mentioning though, because it lacks the more solid and premium feel that both the Tiny2 Lite and Keo Pro Ultra have. And keep in mind the Tiny2 Lite weighs even less than the Facecam 4K, but still manages to feel stronger overall. Elgato went with a one over 1.8 inch Sony Starvis image sensor to capture video with this thing. It's bigger than what you'd find in basic webcams, but it's still a lot smaller than the APS-C or full frame sensors that modern digital cameras use. If you don't know anything about image sensors, just know bigger is better. The bigger the sensor, the bigger the pixels. And bigger pixels are more efficient at gathering light. And that can translate to higher sensitivity and better dynamic range compared to smaller sensors with the same resolution. In other words, big sensors can produce higher quality images. The lens is a built-in prime, meaning it doesn't have the ability to zoom optically, but you can use digital zoom through the software if you want. And its maximum aperture is f4. I was hoping for something faster to allow for better low light performance and shallower depth of field. The full frame equivalent focal length is 21 millimeters, resulting in a horizontal field of view of about 90 degrees. That's pretty much the perfect focal length for a webcam. My all time favorite focal length for talking headshots where I'm sitting here talking to the camera like right now is 20 millimeters. And this is like right there. Other webcam makers should take notice and make their lenses wider. It just makes everything so much easier. It's so much easier to frame your shot, get everything composed the way you want it, and start recording. It's so much better. The front element has a 49 millimeter diameter filter thread, so you can attach any type of compatible circular lens filters like polarizers, NDs, mist filters, or any type of effect or magnification filter. I do question the usefulness of this on a webcam, but you know, having a feature that adds some extra options for customization is always welcome. For video capture, it can do 4K recording up to 60 frames per second, and that's definitely the highlight feature on here. 4K60 can give you buttery smooth footage with a lot of motion clarity. Plus, it can be slowed down to achieve a 2x slow motion effect when played back at 30 frames per second. A lot of webcams will force you to drop the resolution down to 1080p to be able to record at 60 FPS. So this one being able to record high frame rates at the full 4K resolution is definitely a nice feature. When I first started testing this, I thought something was wrong because I couldn't get the camera to autofocus on me. And I also couldn't find any manual focus settings in the software. Taking a closer look, I noticed it's marketed as having fixed focus. In other words, it's not supposed to change. And that's when I realized why they went with an F4 aperture lens on here. It's because they wanted an extra deep range of focus to make up for the fact that it's not variable. Fixed focus is fine most of the time because it's a webcam and it's gonna sit there a set distance from you pointed at your face recording and things aren't really changing. But your shot could end up looking a little soft if you're not right within that range of focus. And there's really nothing you can do about it other than adjust the distance of the camera to where you're sitting if you're even able to do that within your setup. In the software, you can play around with the framing by applying some digital zoom. So if I zoom in a little bit here, I can then click and drag this blue rectangle around to recompose and frame the shot. And if you turn on face tracking, it'll pan around to keep your face centered in the frame. Turning on that face tracking setting does come with a bit of a trade-off though, because it caps your video output at 1080p and 60 FPS. There's some basic picture settings here. It lets you change things like the contrast, saturation, or sharpness. So if you're finding things are looking a little soft due to the fixed focus, you can try bumping up some of that sharpness right here. 
You can turn automatic sharpness on or off and set the metering mode, which is the area that it uses to calculate the auto exposure settings. And you can also dial in some compensation to brighten or darken the image. When you're in manual mode, you can set the ISO and shutter speed yourself. For realistic motion blur, I like to set the shutter to double the frame rate. So for 30 FPS video, it's 1 60th, and for 60 FPS, it's 1 1 20th. The dynamic range settings allow you to control how much detail from the brightest brights to the darkest darks that the camera is going to be able to capture. There's three settings to choose from here, but you can only use standard or wide at resolutions above 1080p. Personally, I wouldn't go any higher than the wide setting anyway, because it just makes the image look overly processed and weird. White balance, same sort of thing. You can leave it on auto or switch over to manual and set the white point yourself. You can set the amount of noise reduction. There's a few different presets here and you can turn it off completely or choose custom and play around with it that way. I like to keep it on low because it does a good job of balancing noise and maintaining detail at the same time. And there's an anti-flicker setting here. So if you're in North America, you're gonna wanna leave that on 60 Hertz. It's basically reducing flickering from the lights in your room. Under the effects tab, you can flip or mirror the image with these buttons here at the top. And you can add in some fake background blur or change the background altogether. And it does a pretty good job masking me out and applying the background, looks pretty good. There's some preloaded LUTs, which are basically picture profiles or filters that you can apply to give your footage a different look. You can also add your own custom LUTs if you want. And the last thing here is probably the weirdest setting I've ever seen on a webcam. It's called eye contact. And what it looks like it's doing is putting some artificial eyes on me and then pointing them at the camera. So it looks like I'm paying attention even if I'm not. It's kind of funny, but you know, at the end of the day, it's fake and kind of creepy looking. So I can't imagine I'd get much use out of it. These days in 2025 and beyond, the word webcam doesn't just mean the crappy little camera that comes built into your laptop. There's some solid options out there that use big image sensors, fast lenses, and autofocus to produce images that are starting to approach what you can get with some digital cameras. The Elgato Facecam 4K does a decent job when it comes to image quality, but it falls a bit short in low light performance. It has no autofocus or ability to change the focus manually, and it doesn't have the best build quality. Still though, even with those shortcomings, it manages to produce a good looking image in the right lighting conditions. It's super easy to set up and use. It's got the perfect all around focal length. It can record 4K video at 60 FPS, and it allows you to have some fun with some lens filters. So if you wanna stream or make content for YouTube or other platforms, and 4K 60 FPS is important to you, then this Elgato Facecam 4K could make sense as long as you can live with those shortcomings. The full specs and details are down in the description along with some purchasing links. Check that stuff out if you're interested. Give the video a thumbs up, get subscribed on your way out, and we'll see you soon.